When making adjustments or modifications to an image in Photoshop, there are two ways you can approach it, destructively or non-destructively. I think you can figure out which one is probably the best. Now, for some adjustments, you don't have a choice. You can only do it destructively. But for most adjustments, you do. So I'm going to show you both ways here and uh, then encourage you to use non-destructive methods if you can. So what does destructive mean versus non-destructive? Well, it means that when you make a change, you are physically changing the pixels. And so that means that if you close the file and then reopen the file, those pixels have been permanently changed. You can't get back to where you were. Ah! So non-destructive obviously means you are not doing that, that you are really just filtering the pixels, say, oh. to reflect the look you want them to have, but that you can modify those changes, undo those changes, go back to the photo as it originally was. So anytime you must do destructive editing, you know, always make a copy of your file and work on the copy as opposed to the original. That way, if you change your mind and need to go back, then you have that as an option. So let me show you uh, what this means very directly. So I'm gonna show you destructive first. And so to destructively adjust my image, I'm gonna go to the image menu pull down to adjustments, and then I have all of these different choices for ways I can adjust my image. And so I'm just gonna use a very obvious one, hue saturation. So I will choose that, and that will bring up a window that will allow me to make adjustments to my image. And so you see I can adjust this hue slider. Hue is a fancy word for color. Oh, oh, oh. I can adjust saturation. In other words, how intense is that color? If I have zero saturation, there is no color. If I have 100%, then it is very intense color. Uh, lightness, you know what that is. Now, I usually don't use this slider here. Uh, there are better tools for adjusting the lightness and darkness. But if I slide this U slider around, you'll see that it will start to rather dramatically change the image. So let's say I end up somewhere around there. Now saturation, if I take the saturation down, it makes it less intense all the way down to grayscale. If I pull it all the way up, then I can make this thing pretty much insane. So let's say I end up like around there. Okay, so say when I do this, I'm just absolutely thrilled. This is a beautiful, beautiful image. So I'm gonna click okay. I have changed the image. You can see in my layer over here that it shows it as a, as a green child. Uh, and I'm just so thrilled. I can't believe the quality of the work I've done here. Pure genius. Yeah. So anyway, I wrap up my day. Time for me to get out of the office and uh, head on home. And then uh, I come back the next day. So, you know, I obviously I shut down my computer and, and when I come back in, I turn it up, launch Photoshop, and this is what greets me. So obviously I am awake and focused and ready to start the day and I'm also ready to throw up because this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Ew. So what do I do in this case? Well, if I haven't saved a copy of the file before I modified it, then at this point I just kill myself. I can't go back to where I was. And so that is the downside of destructive editing, is you permanently change the image, and unless you have a copy, you can't go back. Fortunately, because I haven't quit Photoshop or shut down my computer, I can actually undo this. So in Photoshop, you have an undo key, uh, Command Z, same as it is in Illustrator, and that will go back one step. So the problem is if you've done more than one step, then that undo uh, key doesn't really help. So there's another window, fortunately, called the history window. And that's attached to the dock up here, or obviously you can find it under the window menu. And you will see that this will list the various things you've done in your file. So all I want to do is step back to the previous step that I would like to keep. So in this case, there's only two steps. So I'm going to go back to open, and that will effectively throw away that adjustment I made.
So history windows, a good one. So remember it's there. Yeah. Now, how do I make a non-destructive edit? I don't want to know. Well, you use what's called an adjustment layer. And so if I go to the layers window, you will see at the bottom all these various icons. So these two, you know, the trash can and the new layer button. Uh, but a couple over from there is this little circle that looks almost like a yin yang, half white, half black. If I click on that, it will drop a menu and you will recognize what these items are. It's the same items that I had access to under the image adjustments menu. So I'm gonna choose the same thing, the hue saturation. And you'll notice two things occur over here. You'll notice that it immediately adds a layer in my layers window. Well, that is the adjustment layer and that's what's gonna capture the information for the change to the image. And then it opened up the properties window. And so this basically shows the same things you saw in that pop-up window. It's gray instead of white. Make sure that this layer is active and then go to your properties window and then you can do all the same things you did before. So let's just kind of get that back to where I had it. So say I come in, open up Photoshop and this is what I see in the morning. I'm repulsed by my insensitivity and ability to design something so ugly, but fortunately no one needs to know because I can just go to my adjustment layer and I can either turn it off, I can drag it to the trash, or better yet, I can just go back in and adjust. And so say I don't want this child to be lime green. What I really meant to do was make him purple, which I think is a much better choice. Totally And maybe just sure. not quite so bright. And so now my career has been saved. I have the ability to move on and pretend like this is always what I had intended. All thanks to the adjustment layers. So that's it. In the next video, I'll show you how to create selections so that you can do selective edits as opposed to overall adjustments. Yeah.